morning. My name is Pastor Eugene Taylor. Welcome to Emmanuel Church of Christ. We appreciate you spending your time with us because there's many things you can be doing on a Sunday morning. We thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate you. Before we start, I want to start off with a prayer. Can you bow your heads with me? Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, let me say thank you. Thank the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the good, joyous music we have so far. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for letting us see another year from 2022 to 2023. And Father, just thank you for letting us just be here and have a right mind when to serve you. If I'm asking you to bless each family of Reverend Center here, bless them that go out and better be prosperous this year and have a good new year. And Father, as the word goes out, let the word not come back void. And then Father, bless everyone here that when the word goes out, they follow good ground. And let it not come back void. And Father, we ask you to decrease me and increase you through me. And then Father, we ask them this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I bless you to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. You may be seated. My scripture reference for today is Habakkuk, the second chapter, verses 2 through 3. It's Habakkuk, second chapter, verses 2 through 3. I'm currently utilizing the uh, King James versions, Habakkuk 2, verses 2 through 3. It reads, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Maybe you see it. You know, Steve Jobs was a guru in technology field. He was fired from Apple, the company he started. After he was fired from Apple, he started a company, another company called Next. He failed that. After that, he started another company with a company called Lisa Computer. He failed at that. So back in 1976, Steve Jobs formed a company called Apple. He built one of the first commercially personal computers that was sold. You know, back then, around 76 times frame, you probably don't remember, but they had something called mainframes. It's pretty much just like this computer processing thing that processed millions and billions of data within a short live time. But now we have, I guess mainframes are about maybe like the size of a refrigerator, pretty big. Now they're probably small. Everyone has a computer in their hands. But Apple grew under Steve Jobs. It grew, it got bigger and bigger. Once it started growing, it got bigger. They hired important, smart people to help run the company. The first year, everything was going fine, you know. Then about a year and a half or so, the executives started bumping heads together about the class, you know, they to fill out. Then the board of directors had a meeting. And they decided to, against Steve Jobs, they decided to kick him out. They fired him. So in May 1985, the company Apple that he started, he was fired from Apple. You know, they fired him because he had some kind of personality complex. You know, they say he ruled with a force of personality. He had, he would actually ridicule ideas of others, laugh at him. He was unwilling to hear sides from different stories. He was unwilling to, to just to review other views. He also had bad outbursts of temper. So after he was fired, he saw another company, a computer company called Next. After seven years, that computer company called Next, he closed it down. He laid the workers off. But he shifted his direction then. He shifted his focus to developing software. So in December 1995, Apple bought his company for $400 million. So in 1997, he became the CEO of Apple. And as a CEO, one of the first moves that he made was to get rid of, of Next, which is an operating system that he made. So when Steve Jobs returned to Apple, 
He led the business to become one of the most successful communication company in the U.S. So his getting fired forced him to change his ways. His getting fired forced him to change his visions. So a vision is just a, a statement for an organization that talks about middle and long-term goals. Vision statements are the goals that the company strives toward. Vision statements are, in a nutshell, are where you want to go. A mission statement is how you get there. Today I want to use for a subject New Year's Vision. New Year's Vision. I just want to talk to you for the next few minutes about vision, about goals, about time. So what is vision? Numbers, the 12, and the 6th verse says, he said, listen to my words, where there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions, I speak to them in dreams. And God wants to give you a greater vision of who he is and what he has for you. But Satan, on the other hand, Satan has goals to use guilt, insecurity, and fears to keep you from getting what God wants for you. But you can tap into God's power and God's vision by reading his word, meditating on God's word, meditating on scriptures. So the definition of insanity is <laughs> doing the same thing and expecting over and over again and expecting different results. Some of you have been in a prayer relationship for 10, 15, 20 years. You think he's going to change. You say, she's going to change. You've been trying to lose 10 pounds for 10 years. Thinking about getting back to school, but you're scared. You're trying to get off the diabetes medicine, but you love sweets too much. You're trying to get out of debt, but you keep spending. Saints, my brothers and sisters, it's pony season. Otherwise, March is coming up when people trim trees and everything. The time's coming for the give it that Dead weight, what else keep you down? Get rid of it. You've been thinking about it for a long time. Be like Nike, just do it. You don't need a New Year's resolution, but if you expect to do the same thing you did in 2022 and get different results in 2023, this message is not for you. You need to change. You've been running your house for maybe 15, 20 years. Now it's stop, time to stop running, time to buy. You want that degree? I'm here to tell you, go for it. You want that new job, you want that new house, new this, do that, go for it. Just like Steve Jobs had to change his vision when he got fired from Apple, he changed his vision. You need to change the vision in your life. The Hebrew word vision means revelation. If you look at the NIV version or King James version, they notice they use revelation, some use revelation, some use vision. So vision is just a revelation came from vision. Revelation came from a form of a dream. Revelation or vision was communication from God to the prophets. And then after the prophets received the word, they give it to the people. Let me say that again. Vision is communication from God to the prophet, then delivered to the people. So during this time frame, Habakkuk, he saw a lot of things going on, much like today. He saw injustice. He was complaining and questioning God about what was going on. He was concerned about why the righteous people were surrounded by the wicked. He was wondering why the law is so powerless. It seemed like the law protects the powerful and put the weak in jail. It put the, us in jail for petty crimes. The Babylonians at this time, it was on a path of death and destruction. This reminds me of today. You had the mass shootings. You had the school shootings. This recently had a six-year-old boy shoot a teacher. You know, crime is on every corner. Crime is in the church. They have war in Ukraine, war on drugs. We have mass incarceration of our sons and daughters. Habakkuk is wondering, why is God allowing these things to happen? God answered Habakkuk in the scriptures. He said, and the Lord answered him, me, and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that may run that we did it. Maybe he wrote this vision on tables or iron tablets. Maybe he wrote this vision on a public place like Ten Commandments. But he said to write it so he may run that read it. In other words, write it plainly, write it legibly, write it so people can.
can remember it and see it in essence, write it so it's easy to understand, write it so it's a permanent record. In other words, like the Bible, it was written several thousand years ago, but read it so people in the future can read it. Your kids, kids, children can read it. And write it so when it comes to pass, they'll say, God had his hand in that. Write it so they'll believe the prophets, so the prophets will be inspired with the power the prophets said. Write it so they'll know the prophets' inspiration of words from God came true. The prophet, he received the word. When they see the word, they only hear the word, but they write it down. He wrote it down. So when you receive something, the word, sometimes you got to write it down. Say, write the vision down. You write it down to make it permanent. You write it down so it'll be universally understood. Like the Bible, you have different versions. King James, NIV, ESV, different versions. Write it down and make it plain so everybody can understand it. Different nationalities, different nations. Transform it from African people, everybody. So make it universal so everybody can read it. So write this word down so just people can understand it easy. Don't make it so difficult they can't understand it. Make it easy so even a child can understand. I know that many of you have a New Year's resolution, but about two weeks until the New Year's, you might go back to the same old stuff, do the same things you used to do. You might become insane again. If you write things down, it tends to help you to remember things better. So write things down help you to remember things on different levels. Namely, you read something, write something down, it helps you on two different levels. There's an external level and there's an encoding level. External encoding is when you write stuff down and put a location, you might write it on a, a tablet, write it on a computer, write it on a refrigerator, write it on a bathroom, write it on a mirror, write it down somewhere, write it down so you can review it, look at it back and forth. You pass by the mirror, you can see it, so write it down on the refrigerator. Encoding is a different thing, though. Encoding involves a scientific, biological process where things you receive in your mind, it travels to the brain. It travels to the part of the brain that does memory, the part of the brain that analyzes stuff. It's called the hippocampus, where they analyze and store long-term memory. In other words, when you write things down, it's easier to come to your memory. The neuropsychologists have identified this effect as a generational effect. In other words, if you make something or write something, you write it, have an idea, write it on a piece of paper, generate that idea, it's called a generation effect. It helps you to better remember things in the future. Like Habakkuk said, write it down, make it plain. So write your ideas down, write your goals down. The vision is just a clear image of how you see yourself in the future. It's what you believe in, it's what you want to become, what you want to create, that new job you want. It's what you want to desire in the future. So envision inspires people. Envision motivates people. Vision keeps you excited. Vision gives you a pathway to take. You could set vision for your life, set vision for career relationships. You can have a vision for what you want to have. You have a vision for what you want to do. You may have a vision for what you want to be. But just like the vision came from God to the prophets, put God first and all things will be added to you. The Bible says, but seek ye the first kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. So once you receive the vision, you can set goals. Goals are how you plan to achieve the vision. This leads me to my next point. Goals. I mentioned earlier, Satan goals is to use guilt, insecurity, and fear to keep you from living a full, joyous life. John 10.10 10. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God, but God comes to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Goals are just nothing more than steps to achieve your vision. Goals help you achieve your vision. I can't say it enough. Your visions and goals should align with the word of God. Because God has a plan for you, but if your vision doesn't align with God's, nothing at all. The goals could be for feelings. Goals could be for results. Goals could be for new skills, knowledge, new jobs, money. Goals could be for physical or mental training. Goals could be to lose weight. You might think that a goal of losing weight or saving money is your goal. My, my thing, question to you is, what's behind that goal? What's the motive behind that goal? Does the motive have to do with self-image, health, or does the goal have to do with money? So your New Year's resolution has many of us thinking about it. But remember, what's your motive behind what you want? Is your focus aligned with God's word? Or do you have
selfish focuses. Remember, put God first, all things will be added to you. The word says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all those things shall be added to you. So as you write your goals down, be specific, be quantifiable. I mean, put like time frames to it, figures to it, so you can, when you make that small increment, small step, you check it off so you made an improvement. So seek ye the first the kingdom of heaven, and all things will be added to you. So once you visualize that goal, what you want to achieve, set the goals so you can achieve them in incremental steps, like step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So what do you do? Do it heartily for the Lord and not for men. God created me a pure heart. So how do you purify and have good motives for goals? You do it by watching out for selfish ambition. You do it by depending and leaning on Jesus. You do it by concerning good examples. And you do it by concerning what's fruitful. So how do you watch out for selfish ambition? The Bible says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Each of you look not only on your own interests, but also the interests of others. Philippians 2, 3-4. We should have godly ambition. We should serve God when we focus on God's will. Be like Paul when he's talking about it. He said, you should imitate me as I imitate Christ. When to be like Christ. So ambition is good as long as ambition is in line with the word of God. Some people can have ambition for the wrong reasons. For example, you, you're a good employee, you've been living in a place for like five, ten years, you want to become a boss. Not wrong with wanting to get promoted, but the problem is to get to the top, you scratch other people's back, you lie on people, cheat on people just to get to the top. So it makes you have good motives for your to achieve your goals. Make sure you don't have selfish ambitions. Next, doing your goals and achievements. Think about depending on Jesus. And trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all his ways, acknowledge him. He'll make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So we have sin in our hearts it makes us self-deficient. In other words, I, 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 not me. Sin gives us a self of accomplishment, you know. God tells us to lean and depend on Jesus. The Word, the Bible says, whoever abides in Him, I, He said, whoever abides in me and I in Him, He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If you haven't prayed in a while, the prayers won't get answered. So if you haven't prayed, the prayers won't get answered. So consider yourself to be good and set good examples for goals. If you don't have any ideas about setting any goals for this year, last year, any goals at all, a good reference is 2 Corinthians 21, verses 9 through 14. It tells you to pray without ceasing, to pray for knowledge, to pray for spiritual wisdom, pray for understanding, pray that you be strengthened with power and joy of the Lord. Pray that you bear fruit in your life. You know, if you have a fruit tree outside, and a fruit you don't bear no fruit, it's no good to it down. So pray that you be a fruitful person. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, all such things there is no law. So set your resolutions with the goal of being fruitful. The world tells you you could be have your cake and eat it too. You might want to lose some weight. You get a diet, but I'm telling you, sometimes you gotta go through the process to get things done in life. It might not be easy to go through the process. So when people think about what they want for the year, they think about self improvement. Think about living healthier. Think about being happier. They think about losing weight. Think about exercising more. Think about telling, spending more time with the grandkids. It's spending about giving up smoking. Think about giving up alcohol. But goals are here to help you stay focused on your
I'm trying. Goals are great, but they shouldn't go include God. God, he wants to get the attention of the people. God wants to be built on his heart, but his will is for you. For God's ways, not our ways. So when we don't follow God, we cast off restraint. In other words, when we don't follow God, we do what's right in our own eyes. Sometimes we set goals, arrange agendas, then pray for God's blessing. It should be the other way around. It should be get a vision from God, set goals, pray, and God will, will bless you. This leads to the last point is time. Time is something we don't have. Time is something you can't get back. Once time is gone, it's gone. For the revelation of wasting an appointed time, it speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. We must wait on the Lord's time. He has a season for everything. A season to be happy, a season to be sad, a season for joy, time to live, time to die. But you may experience sad times in life. You may experience happy times in life, but those times may fade away. Remember, if you're happy, it depends on what happens. We need to understand that God's timing, no matter when it is, is perfect. So all God's ways are perfect. God's time is never early. Early. God's time is never late. He has a complete control for everything and everyone. He is from everlasting to everlasting. When we wait on God, we receive the strength. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Be of courage. He shall strengthen your heart. I say, Wait on the Lord. James, the fourth chapter, verse 14 says, We are a vapor. In other words, time on this earth is short. We have limited time, so make the best use of it. Use your time wisely. You can have fun. You don't have to go to church 24-7, but you can have fun. But you can relax, but you need to make sure your priorities are in order. You make sure your, your health is important. Your health is important. Yeah, the spiritual health is important. The physical health is important. But your spiritual health is most important. Because this helps you align your other goals in life. Make sure you get your things right to you and God. Spend time in the Word. Spend time in the Word helps you align your other priorities. Helps you to care for your family. Help you to manage finances. Without God, you don't have money. You don't have family. You, have, you don't have finances. See, so your body is a stewardship from God. Your body is meant to glorify God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You think you should keep it right, keep it tight? So your physical health is important, but your spiritual health is more important. Doing the best in your job is important. Serving others and serving people at church is important. You can enjoy life and live longer if you have your spiritual health and physical health. Proverbs 29 chapter 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. In conclusion, this is a year to take back what the devil stole from you. Talk to God. Study. Fast. Pray. Meditate on God's word. Get a vision. Write the vision down. Write it down in your head. Write it in your heart. Write it on paper. Set goals. Align your goals with God. Get your spiritual and physical life in order. Wait on God. And watch your New Year's vision. Come to bed.